Now then crew, welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. This is episode two in the Gearbox investigation problem on the Triumph Bonneville, the 1978 and a half Triumph Bonneville, as Alan would call it. Uh, the reason for that is it's a, it's a bit of a changeover year. They put a few bits on, on the later from the later model and it's still mainly the previous model, so it's confusing. But anyway, uh, in the last video, which you should have already watched because otherwise you won't really know what's going on. Uh, we removed the outer cover of the gearbox that contained things like the um, the kickstart quadrant and spring. It had the clutch actuation mechanism from the cable to push the clutch push rod through to the clutch to the basket, and it also had the input shaft coming in from the gear lever and some special magic stuff that then basically controls the gear selection within the gearbox. So, in this video, we now need to get the gearbox out of the bike. We suspect there are some broken teeth on uh, either second gear drive or second gear driven, or potentially both. There might also, because some teeth have broken off, be some secondary damage to other gears in that gearbox. We just don't know. When we drain the oil, no bits of shrapnel came out, so they're probably still inside the gearbox. They should be. Okay, let's have a little look at the manual and see what's required on the next step. Here we go. <laughs> Now, we're using, for this part at least, the uh, the Haynes manual for the Triumph 650 and 750 two-valve twins. Now, Alan's bike is blue, and this is sort of a blue one, so it must be the right manual. Okay, page 56, there we go. <clears throat> Section 4, page 56, says dismantling the gearbox, removal, uh, removing the inner uh, the inner end cover and gear clusters. That's what we need, we need the gear clusters out. Removal of the inner cover may be hampered by the flexible oil pipes immediately below the gearbox. If it is necessary to remove them, the oil tank must first be drained. It is recommended that the pipes are detached by removing the unions at the point where the pipes join the crankcase, which is more accessible after the gearbox outer cover has been removed. We've done that already. Now, the union is retained by a stud uh, by one center nut and washer. There is no chance of the pipes being inadvertently reversed if this procedure is adopted. Okay, so let's go and check that out. See if, see if we need to remove those oil pipes. Probably do. Hopefully, Oakley, <clears throat> this is the union they're talking about. And we can see the two oil pipes coming into the crankcase here. Now, the easiest way to do it will be to remove the hose clamps. But, as Mr. Haynes says, we should undo this bolt in the middle which will then allow the whole assembly to come away, this whole union to come down. Uh, however, it might be a bit difficult to tuck it through the frame, but we'll see how we get on, see what happens. I have a spanner. Now, spanner size 7 sixteenths, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, let's try and get the ring spanner end on first. Too tight. It's not gonna, it's not gonna go in, is it? That oil pipe at the back must have got bent or something bent backwards and there's not enough clearance. There should be on this on this bike, there isn't. So how on earth are we gonna do this? Jeez, don't wanna bend the oil pipe back because that might cause it to fracture. Maybe I can get just enough approach on it, let's see. Oh no, hey, that's not good. That's not good at all. It looks like a big nut actually, rather than a bolt. No. Okay, I think the plan B will be to remove the two pipes, but I'll need to mark one of them up as being the forward pipe, so time for a paint pen. Okay, so just to be on the safe side, yellow to lots of yellow. Okay, 
that should prevent me from getting it uh, mixed up when we finally come to put the bike back together, whenever that's going to be, because we wouldn't need a lot of parts for this bike. Oh, that was loose. Oh my word. A lot of stuff on this bike, just like with the CB750, seems to be loose. Now, there wasn't a lot of turns on that before it could actually be separated, so let's see if we can get that hose clamp completely out of the way. And we're putting new ones of those on there, so let's not worry too much about that. That's one. And that one's from this direction here, look. Just working around the camera. That was almost as loose as well. Jeez. Okay. Now, can we get that one out of the way too? Who knows? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, now I've not drained the oil tank because it's going to come out of the pipes anyway. I'm not too concerned. We've got our oil catchment tray when we did the gearbox down below. So let me just cut that cable tie I put on earlier on to hold them out of the way of the drain for the gearbox. That was on the previous video. Where's the rag? Okay. We're going in. Prepare for oil. Way there we go. Look, lots of oil. Splosh. Okay, that's now draining nicely into the oil catchment pan. Let's see if we can get this one off. There we go. Thread that back through there, look. And under that uh, cross member. Excellent. Okay, lots of oil coming out. We will leave that to drain. Obviously we're gonna need a nice new gasket for that gearbox cover for sure. Okay, things are looking good. Right, we'll leave that wedged under there for now. Catch any drips out of those pipes. Right, back to the bench. Okay, so whilst that oil's draining out, it could take a few minutes. Let's take another look in the manual and see what the next step is. Okay, step two. Before the inner cover can be removed, it will be necessary to detach completely the rear right-hand engine plate, which forms part of the mounting for the unit construction frame. Remove the kickstart pinion ratchet, retaining nut from the end of the gearbox main shaft looks like that one uh, after bending back the tab washers it can be locked by applying the back brake whilst the gearbox is held in top gear ah that's why we put it in top gear on the last video draw the ratchet assembly off the main shaft complete with spring and inner bush uh, I see what they mean. Yes, there is a ratchet mechanism here on this uh, on this gear. I can see it quite clearly. I'll show you in a second. Uh, and this here is the push rod that goes through to the clutch. Now, we also need, and the first thing we need to do is remove this engine plate at the back. So let's crack on with that. Okay, <clears throat> now I think this big nut here, that's a swing arm nut, that's the swing arm shaft. Uh, we, that should stay in place. It looks like there's a cutout on this plate to come away from that. So we can leave that one alone. Uh, not too sure it's going to go on down here. This this shaft does move around, so it may be that that nut will come off. If I remove this, it'll slide off that shaft. So let's undo these three bolts first. These are all half inch, by the looks of it. Almost sound like I know what I'm talking about now, doesn't it? Right, so that's that one loosened off. Let's crack this one off as well. If we can get in there. There we go. Now, where the hell is that one? Is that captive? No, it's not. It's hiding right back. Holy moly, how are you supposed to get to that? Bear with me, people. Not as bad as it looked. It'd 
be a real awkward job at the side of the road with this. Right, that's the nut out of the way. Can't feel a washer at the back, not on that one. Obviously that was too hard. Let's see if we can buzz that out. Using the impact wrench. There we go, that's that one. Okay, how about this one? Just catch all the debris. Is it coming? Oh, there goes the glove. There we go. That's that one. And they are both the same length, which is excellent. Now, what has fallen out is a huge washer. Honestly, no idea where that came from. And we've got another one down there as well. So, what was that big washer off? I don't know. Tell you what, though, we'll find out one day. Oh, I know, it'd be off the, um, the, the uh, foot peg bracket, I think. And that holds an oil pipe back, so we'll stick that back on there. There we are, look. To camera, I need to camera. If it will go back on, there we are, look. That will remind me to fit that when we do. And somewhere, oh, there's another washer. Somewhere there's a nut. But I'll find that. That'll turn up. Okay. So, is that now free? It's not. So we'll remove that. I think we might have to undo that big nut there, look. Okay. Lots of bits coming off. Luckily, I can watch the video when I put it back together again to see where it all goes. So much easier. Okay, I've got to find a socket now that's going to fit on there. Or, is this going to fit? I don't know how tight it's going to be. It does fit. Let's have a go. Who knows? Oh, it's loose. Look at that. Trying not to scratch the paint. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> that might undo my fingers now. Only just. There we go. Right, that bracket is now off. Super job. We'll leave that alone. That seems to be quite happy where it is. Okay. Now, next job, I think, will be that large nut on the end of the shaft with the ratchet for the uh, kickstart. There we go. Now, it does have a tab that we've got to bend back first. So I'll find me punch, we had a punch earlier on, so that's good. Uh, and we'll use the magic hammer. Because a bit of magic's always a good thing. That's one. There's another one down here, which is really tight. Oh, there we go. Cool. And uh, now we're going to need a socket for that. What have we got? What size is this? 24. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. We'll use that one. Now, this is probably going to turn, and this is what you should be holding the rear brake on. Yes. Oh, the, oh that was loose. That was really loose because I didn't hold the rear brake on at all. Okay. One nut. Now for the locking washer. There we go. We'll see if we can get a new one of those. And now for that ratchet mechanism that I said I'd show you later on. And there's the ratchet. Looking pretty good, Nick. There's no big chunks missing on that. And we can bring out the gear. This is the, the driven gear by the Kickstart Quadrant. And it's got a bush in it. And behind it is a little spring box, a little spring washery thing. 
There we go. So we'll stick all that back together and we'll go and put that back on the bench. Well, that's looking pretty good to me, to be perfectly honest. There can't be too much more to take out. It's basically empty. Okay, back to the bench. Uh, draw the ratchet assembly off the main shaft, complete with the spring and the inner bush. Done that. Withdraw the clutch push rod from the centre of the main shaft. I haven't yet done that. Let's go and do that now. Okay. Clutch push rod. Very long clutch push rod. Ridiculously long clutch push rod. Holy crap! Right, that's all of it. Cool. Now be careful because there might, there might there might be a ball bearing down there. Who knows? So if you see one trundle out of the end of that uh, shaft, let me know. So what's next, Andy? Okay. Number three, machines having an engine number prior to DU24875 have the speedometer drive taken from the gearbox. It will be necessary to release the speedometer drive cable by unscrewing the union nut so that the cable is withdrawn before the inner end cover is detached. Now I've checked this bike and the speedometer is driven by the rear wheel in the hub so we can discount that for this particular job. Uh, three again. <laughs> Uh, if it's necessary to remove the final drive sprocket uh, to renew the gearbox main bearing oil seal, it is advisable to remove the outer uh, chain case cover at this stage and dismantle the primary drive, as described in Chapter 1, Section 10. We don't need to do that at the moment. It is much more difficult to remove these components at a later stage since there will be no support for the gearbox main shaft and lay shaft after the inner cover is removed. Ah, okay. Unscrew the large domed nut, number four, uh, from beneath the gearbox and withdraw it complete with the cam plate plunger and spring. Oh, I think that's what we, just, we took out before when we drained the oil. Then remove the gearbox inner cover by unscrewing the cross head screw allen screw and bolt that re retains it in position. The latter is found within the recess portion of the end cover, close to the oil pipe union. A few light taps with a rawhide mallet may be necessary to displace the cover so it can be slid off over the end retaining studs. Okay, let's go and do that. Now, having a look around, I think we've got a retaining crosshead screw in there. Let's not, let's hope we don't chew that one up. Oh, the glue. Seriously, this is not good. This is bad for an engine. It really is bad. Who rebuilt this thing? This is just excessive use of glue, of sealant. Wow. So I can see the crosshead screw there. We've got an Allen key uh, bolt there, a cap head. And down here, we've got an external bolt. That's three. Plus, of course, we've got this stud, which runs through the casing, which is what they're on about being difficult to get off. So I might try and clean off some of that glue so it doesn't get drawn in. And this one has already come out. This stud's already come out with that funny nut that we had earlier on on the first video. Okay, so where do we start? I think we should start with that one. Because if we chew that up, it's game over. We'll be off to the pub. Now, with that screw being down a hole, there's not a lot you can see, but I've been hunting around for a screwdriver that's got uh, a good, well-fitting end on it. A tip. So, we'll give it a go. I'm going to push quite hard. I don't want it to slip. I don't know how tight it's going to be. Oh, no. It's actually very loose. Holy crap, people. Honestly. Look at all the glue coming out again. Right, get rid of that. And that is the bolt screw thing in question. Okay, that was easy. That was too easy. That was way too easy. Okay, now for that cap head. Right, hopefully this is the right size. It is a 732 tooths. Whatever that is. Right, it is. There we go, look. This might be the only tight bolt on the bike. 
Oh, got it. Okay, we're on. Nice. Honestly, everywhere you go, there's bits of sealant coming out. I know all bikes leak oil. I mean, isn't that how they tell you they've got oil in them? Right, that's run out of thread now. Where's my pliers? Let's see if we can pull that out. Holy moly. Look at the state of that. Is this what you have to do to British bikes? Try and keep the oil in them? That's terrible. It's gonna need a lot of cleanup. There's just gloop everywhere. <laughs> That's a later job, Andy. Okay, focus now. Okay, whilst we're in this position, I did notice there is another washer. Where's my screwdriver gone? That we haven't removed yet. It's disappeared. Honestly, I lose tools. It was here a second ago. There it is. Okay, rolled under the rear tire. So, on this shaft here, there is on the main shaft, another washer. So I'm going to remove that now. I'm going to put it over on the bench with the other bits, the ratchet and stuff that came off there. Okay, we'll get rid of this tissue now because if, I think we're pretty much finished with that. It can dribble a bit more onto the frame. Okay, so we've got a bolt just there. Look, now I think it'll be a half inch. Who knows? I don't know. You don't know, probably. But we'll find out. No, that's too big. That's way too big. It's too big. Okay, we need something smaller. Next one down. All right. The socket says seven sixteenths. Oh, that's more like it. Okay. Let's see if that's going to come undone. Yep, wasn't particularly tight. You bet that it's covered in gloop again. Problem with um, sealant inside an engine is it can very easily migrate and block oilways. Very, very easy indeed. And uh, you know, using too much is a very dangerous game to play. Less is more when it comes to sealant. Right, I think we're about there. Yeah, just do it manually trying to avoid the camera yeah I think it feels like we're just turning now we're not gaining any more outness okay yep yeah. oh man look heaps of gloop on there what the hell people is that because the threads are all knackered I don't know okay that's those three out. Okay, quick recap on number four then, just to make sure we've done everything. So unscrew the large dome head from the, uh, from beneath the gearbox, withdraw it complete with the cam plate, plunger and spring. Done that. Did that ages ago when we drained the oil. Um, obviously pulled the wrong bolt out. These things happen. Uh, then remove the gearbox inner cover by unscrewing the crosshead screw. Done that. The Allen screw. Done that. And the bolt that retains it in position. So we've done three. They all match what they've said. Uh, so the latter is found within a, re a recess portion of the end cover. Found that close to the oil union pipe. That's the bolt. A few light taps with a rawhide mallet or magic hammer may be necessary to displace the cover so it can be slid off over the retaining studs. Cool. Right, we're ready to pull that cover off. Woohoo! Now, before we do that, because of the excess amounts of sealants everywhere, uh, this stud will pass through the casing and it's covered in sealant. So the gasket's already wrecked. We need a new gasket anyway. We'll get a bit of blue roll. We can try and stop some of that going inside. There we go. Look, I just want to try and clean off as much of that as I can. Oh, geez, come back. All is forgiven. Just so it's not drawn into the casing and then, you know, cause it to jam. And that'll do the trick nicely. Good job. Okay, so magic hammer, where are you? There he is. 
Okay, so we'll give it a couple of friendly taps, as it says in the manual. Maybe I can get in there, look. Okay, we've done the friendly tap level. Now we're going to need to do slightly more tappage. Because it's got to come off. We want to see what's inside, don't we? I'm going to go for that one. Oh, I felt something just drop down. Okay, well, we'll find that later on. Oh, hear the change in noise? It's starting to come apart. Yes, I can see a little crack starting to develop in the right place, by the way, between the two casings. So that's a good sign. Okay. Unfortunately, there's very little you can get in, so maybe we can try and get in. Just give it a gentle tap on the end there, look. Lots of little taps are a lot better than one big one. Right, it's about a thumbnail gap now across the top. How are we doing down the bottom? We have got oil leakage, so there must be a gap down there. That's a good sign. This is dodgy, isn't it? Oh, we have movement. Okay, it can now be withdrawn. So I'm just pushing on the main shaft to keep that in place and push it through the bearing. Okay, so out with the cover, in this instance, has come the selector rod shaft. Now that could well have stayed in there. I believe it says we have to take it out later on. Okay. And that's a little quadrant that controls the gear change. Holy moly, look at this. What the hell's going on here, people? There is some kind of a gasket going on, but it's been blathered in sealant. And of course the gasket's wrecked. Look at this. Where's my screwdriver? Sorry, that kind of stuff really bugs me. Okay, I'm gonna stick this on the bench. That can come off, don't need that anymore. Wow. Oh, we are really, really close. I can see the gearbox cluster. Things are looking most excellent. And this should be a relatively short video, which is what most of you want. Bizarre, I know. Makes it easier for me. Okay, let's look at the manual, see what it says. Okay, step five, remove the selector fork spindle, which is a push fit into the gearbox shell. The gearbox main shaft can now be withdrawn together with the lower gear pinions and the selectors. The lay shaft and the remaining gear pinions can be withdrawn leaving only the complete assembly and the main shaft top gear. The complete, oh sorry, cam plate will pull off its shaft without difficulty. Do not lose the two brass thrush washers which locate with the needle roller bearings or the rollers from the selector forks. Sounds like there's a lot of bits to fall out. Okay, let's go and do that. Now, this shaft should have stayed in here. Like that. And then we would remove it now. It didn't. It came off with the cover for whatever reason. So we're going to pull that out now. There we go, look. And according to the manual, we can now pull out these two shafts. It says. With a little bit of persuasion. <laughs> it feels pretty 
sell it to me. <laughs> really? It says we can pull it out. Why can't we pull it out? This one feels pretty pretty loose. Where's my rag? They have to come out together. That one's definitely moving. That one's not moving at all. What the hell? Why is that not moving? What have we not done? Hmm. Now, the bike, the gearbox is in fifth gear. We know that because that's where it told us to put it previously. Yes. I'm going to reread the manual. Well, I think we're right. So, based on the fact that something in there is broken, maybe that's the reason why it's a bit hard to get out. So, I'm going to pop this nut back on here. There we go. And then we can grip the nut with some mole grips because I don't want to damage the shaft and get a bit more approach, a bit more purchase on there because it seems to be a little bit reluctant. Well, that's a dead stop, isn't it? Why is that not coming out? It says that it'll come out in the manual. Clearly it's not. Hmm, we're missing something. We really are. I don't want to force anything. So we've done that. We've taken that cover off. And then we move on to picture 45A, which is this one here. And it shows us the two gear clusters. Ours looks a bit different to that. Um, selector fork spindle is a push fit into the gearbox shell. We've pulled the selector fork spindle out. That's done. And then basically it says we should be able to pull all of this out. But, bear with me, if you look, this is the main shaft here and it has a thread at the far end. Now, that thread looks like it holds the sprocket on at the other side of the engine in the main chain case. So, I think we need to go in there and remove that nut. I think they've forgotten to tell us that bit further back in the manual. It's bizarre. It really is, unless they removed that previously. If in doubt, read the second manual. So I've gone back to the Triumph's factory manual, and let's see what they have to say. Now, Triumph say that when these are removed, that's the screw, the three screws that hold the outer cover on, um, withdraw the engaging dog from the lay shaft, that's the lower shaft, see figure D9. We'll see that in a second. Then remove the circlet from the end of the lay shaft with a pair of circlet pliers. Pull the selector rod out and then remove the lay shaft for, um, first gear and its selector fork. So what they're doing here is they're starting to they're getting us to pull the gearbox out in bits rather than bring the whole cluster out as one unit. Okay, pull the selector rod out and then remove the lay shaft first gear selector fork. Withdraw the second gear from the lay shaft and then remove the main shaft complete. So even then, they say that the main shaft should be able to come out with first, second, and third gears in position. Remove the main shaft, fourth, and lay shaft third gears with the selector forks, and then withdraw the lay shaft with the fifth and fourth gears in position. Wow. Okay, a little bit confused here, but let's make a start at least pulling some of those bits out. And um, if I need to dig into the primary uh, chain cover, uh, to undo that nut that's on the end of that main shaft, which I'm pretty sure I will need to do, looking at the, the pictures, uh, then we'll do that. But at least we can get some parts of the gearbox out right now. Okay, let's remove Special Tool 36. <laughs> yeah, at least it told me there was a dead stop there. Okay, so that nut is off. Now we can remove this together with the little thrust washer. Okay, let's have that out of the way. 
and it's pinned i did notice a little pin on the inside of the cover so when you're assembling put that on the inside cover with that hole located critical otherwise if it's out of position it's going to put thrust and provide you know and basically you're going to lose clearance and the whole thing's going to mash up and get hot not good okay let's have this one out if we can ah that's right there's a circlip we go and find the circlip pliers little tiny ones required Right, I reckon these should do the trick. If they don't, we're in trouble because it's about the smallest pair I've got. There we go. Okay, one circlip. Leave that down there. Okay, now we should be able to get that out of there. That's on a bush. It does rotate to the shaft. This gearbox just doesn't seem quite right. Sorry, it doesn't. That is going to have to come off first. What's it catching on? Is it because it's dropped down a bit? There we go. Okay, common sense, Andy. Right, so we'll bring that out as one unit on the bench. Keep it all in order. We'll have that one out next. Keep it all in order. Right. Can we get any off here? We can. Right. So remember in the diagram, uh, this is first gear driven. I think it's definitely first gear. <laughs> okay. And this is second gear at the back. There, look. We're just going to get the diagram. Let's take a look. I was right. It was a while ago since I looked at the manual. Okay, so first gear driven, or they call it low gear. Second gear driven, coming off. Okay, now we said we thought we'd see a problem with second gear. And this is second gear drive, or the, or the lay shaft second gear, should I say. Can we see, let's stick that one on there for now. Can we see any problems with that? Any broken teeth? Oh no, have I got it wrong? Has Andy made a mistake? I hope not. It's a bit mauled, but that's just, you know, riders crunching the gears. A bit worn on the dogs. Okay, well that seems serviceable. I can't see any major problems with that. So that definitely wouldn't cause it to lose drive. Okay, stick that back on the bench. So, first gear driven, uh, or main shaft first gear, main shaft second gear. Let's just turn that around. Oh, oh yeah, that would do it. There's your problem. So we're missing two, what looks like two teeth off that gear. There, if you're not too sure, it's this bit that's broken. <laughs> just for clarification, oh my God, look at that. Okay, so why did it break? I don't know. Was it just old age? Was it Alan's riding technique? I have no idea but it's knackered and it needs a new one okay so we'll stick that over that side that's for those gears can we find any shrapnel let me go and find a magnet and see if we can fish out any bits right i've cleared my magnet off so i'm not going to introduce any bits of metal into the gearbox that shouldn't be already be there uh let's just see if we can oh get off let's see if we can find any bits anything yet just little bits of slithers of metal but I want some teeth where have the teeth gone or is that our problem have they gone somewhere they shouldn't be going because they've got to be in there I'm sure they didn't fall out when we drained the oil okay I can't find get off all we're getting is little tiny fragments of metal in the oil so let's not uh, dwell on that too much let's try and get some more bits of this gearbox taken out okay can we get that one out we might be able to yes there we are look 
Okay. So this was the this is third gear main shaft. And you know, has it sustained any damage? Well, there's more bits of metal look. There look. Little slithers. It doesn't look it doesn't look too bad. It looks like it might have survived. Obviously we'll give everything a good clean and a final inspection, but initially that looks okay. Everything does look quite clean actually. I mean, it's only done six kilometers since it was built up, so you know I reckon the guy must have made a mistake, surely. Right, so we've got that selector out now. Where's my pliers? Pliers would be good for this. I'll get me long nose pliers. Okay, going in. Right. This is now third gear lay shaft, we'll call that. Has that sustained any damage? Because don't forget, those, those two teeth came off and they flew around the gearbox. And they could have very easily got caught between other teeth on other gears and caused problems. So there could even be just cracks in these gears. So we need to have a really good look once everything's cleaned up. There, look, you see? Oh, another bit of metal. I've just spotted. Sorry, I think I was off camera for a second then. So you can have another look. There you go. It looks okay at the moment. I don't like the idea we've got to pull this whole thing apart bit by bit, but uh, anyway. Right, we'll stick that one on there. Oh, that was the lower one, wasn't it? There we are. Got to keep it in order, Andy. Got to keep it in order. Right, we've got another another selector fork we should be able to get out. The selector fork's definitely free. Is there a circle on there? That does not want to come off. Now that's fourth gear and fifth gear. And I'm pretty sure it said that they have to come off with the shaft from memory. So that'll have to stay in there for some unknown reason. And the lay shaft can now come out as can that selector. So that's fourth and fifth. Obviously fifth gear is fixed on that shaft. Fourth gear spins and is obviously locked by the dogs. Right, okay. Interesting stuff, actually. There's a little tiny groove in there, which I think is designed to be there. And there is no oil feed within the shaft. Notice that, look. It's sealed up, and that end is sealed up. So all the lubrication it gets is splash lubrication. <laughs> that wouldn't last on a modern engine, would it? Modern gearbox. Okay, let's stick that over there. So all the... All the lay gears are out. All we have left now is the main shaft, which is basically, it's not going to come out, is it? It's, we have to undo that other nut to get the rest of it out. Okay, let's get rid of that uh, selector fork. That goes with that one. And we'll have another fish around, see if we can find any more bits, because there has to be bits in there. Where are those teeth? Not there. Oh, what was that? Oh, there we are, look. We found them. The two missing teeth. Broken off and hiding in the corner of the gearbox. We'll stick those with the broken gear. Right. I think we've done all that needs to be done at the moment. That might even come off there now. And uh, only when they, only when the main shaft's out of the way, can we withdraw that. Unfortunately, it can stay there for now. Okay. Well, I think we've done enough. Back to the bench. I want to get it all out. I really do. I want to have the whole gearbox on the bench, and then we can inspect every gear under some decent light 
and then make a parts list. So we have to get that sprocket nut undone. So the main shaft will go through the center of the sprocket and come into the pass into the gearbox. And I think we've got access to that from the other side of the engine on the primary chain casing, I suppose you'd call it where the clutch is. Uh, and there is a little inspe one of those little inspection um, covers on there. So we'll whip that off and see what we see. Here we go. <laughs> right, behind here may be what we need. So special tool, was it 36? I don't know what it was. Special tool something in there. Let's give it a turn. Somebody slipped looking, scratched the casing. That wasn't me. I haven't been here before. There we go. Okay. Now, that, is that the end of the shaft? I don't know. It could be. It feels extremely loose. And the sh if it was a case of the shaft, it wouldn't be. And is it the sprocket? It's nowhere near the sprocket. The sprocket is right back here. So, we would need to take this whole casing off. Holy moly, that's a mission and a half, isn't it? I'm torn. I'd just done the uh, the sign off this video and decided to delete it because I've got a change of tact going on. In the past, I would have gone, yeah, okay, let's just keep ripping the whole thing apart and get that main shaft out with the remaining two gears. It's a big job. It's actually quite a big job because you've got to remove the clutch by the looks of it to get to the um, small sprocket on the output shaft of the gearbox. What a mission it would be to fit a new chain and sprocket to this bike. Just absolutely ridiculous in all honesty the way it's designed. Um, but hey, it was a learning process. They wouldn't do it nowadays. I've never come across anything like this before. Uh, not on a modern bike. Um, so I'm actually inclined Given the fact that part supply is hard, I don't want to damage any more gaskets. Um, I haven't got a puller to get the clutch off, uh, so that would be another problem. So actually, what we're going to do, make a management decision, the main shaft with the fourth and fifth gear still on is going to stay in the bike. I'm not taking it out. We've found the problem. We know it was to do with second gear, and we've found the problem gear. Realistically, if I continue to strip the bike down, all I'm doing is making more work for myself, and my time is very limited at the moment, and it's going to cost Alan more money to fix because there's going to be more bits and pieces needed. So, without further ado, let's take a closer look at these gears, see if we can find anything else that needs to be replaced other than just this pair of gears, which are actually forged as one. If that's the only part we need, other than a couple of gaskets and bits and pieces, then it's a bit of a winner, isn't it? Well, winner, winner, chicken dinner is the phrase. Um, if there's more bits needed, then we'll add them to the list. Right, let's take a look. Okay, that is the lay shaft. I put it all back together just so that I don't lose bits and pieces and forget how it goes. It's pretty simple. But we'll look at that shortly. Um, this is third gear. Now... Can you see? I think you can see. Okay, I'll just get. I was going to put a torch on it, but I think we'll be all right. Maybe I could put the torch on it. I'll put the torch on it. Jeez. There we go. Hopefully, you can see slightly better now. So, what we're looking for is damage to this adjacent gear. This sits essentially like that on the shaft. Uh, so, when those teeth, two, oh, two teeth, broke off, uh, was there any chance, or did they get? into mesh with uh, third gear because don't forget this is always spinning even though it's not actually engaged to the shaft when you're in second gear so i'm just looking using the light to go across the teeth to see if there's any any damage there's a bit of bit of gunge on there that actually looks like it survived i think the teeth must have just dropped down straight into the into the casing Most bizarre how my second gear failed so early on, though. Very strange. 
little mark on there but it is just a mark can't feel any oh it's the slightest indent so maybe the tooth plinked off that one as it was flying around so they all look like a pass i don't think that needs to be replaced uh, the dog teeth themselves where's my little flat screwdriver hang on So this is where it actually engages to the shaft when the selector rod uh, slides it across. There's some adjacent uh, teeth that go into this. Radial teeth, I suppose you call them. It's a little bit worn. This should be a nice, sharp, 90-degree flat edge. If you look on this side here, the non-drive side, it's quite it's quite, uh, quite a sharp edge, whereas this is the bit that gets all the grief when it's engaging. And it's got a bit of a rounded edge, but the vast majority of the contact surface, in actual fact, it's slightly undercut. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's not quite at 90 degrees. They've actually undercut it slightly. So once it's engaged, any th you know the thrust that's on that surface pulls it into engagement more, which is a very clever idea. So I think that's going to be okay. Get rid of the gunge. So third gear, which has got some markings on it actually look at that move that out of the way see what the numbers are just for reference it says according to my micrometer 57 and it says 4378 on there maybe a batch number or something i don't know um or maybe 1978 for the model i don't know somebody will know what that number means so stick it in the comments okay so that i reckon is a pass this clearly is not a pass but if we look at the surface in a bit more detail just get all the crap off there there's very clearly two distinct um breaks here this one is really an absolutely clean break uh, i don't believe that this uh, i think this was the second tooth to break and potentially it only broke because the first tooth broke and that would be this one and you can see here look where the break um, there's quite a lot of sort of polished area around here around here and around here now that could have been caused by the tooth uh, once it broke as it rubbed across the surface possibly um, or it could have been that there was some kind of movement uh, within or some fracture within that tooth prior to it completely failing um, maybe we will never know but possibly but uh, yeah the, i'm sure that this one was the one that failed second this failed initially and then as it once as it broke off it took that one out with it is it a poor casting? I don't think so. I mean, I can't see lots of air holes in that. It seems to be relatively good. Again, I'll bring it up to the camera so you get a better idea. There you go, look. So again, let me know your thoughts as to what the potential failure could have been on this gear. Why did it fail? Was it just old and fatigued and had a crack in it? You know, what was the reason? I mean, gears do just fail on their own sometimes. Bit of a burr on there as well, look. That's weird. Uh, it's just a manufacturing, it's there as well, it's just a manufacturing burr. That's okay. All right, so we definitely know that we need one of these. First stroke, second gear, thingamajig. And here are the two teeth. I know you want to look at the teeth as well. Let me get some um, brake cleaner. We'll get the oil taken off. Good old forge to the rescue. All right. Don't want it on the lens, so I'm going to do this gingerly. Now, just remember, I'm going to clean my hands as well, actually. Just remember that these teeth may have sustained more damage post separation from the gear. It may not, what you see here, may well not match exactly uh, the, the break on the gear itself because of secondary impact, so to speak. So, is it going to focus? It is, which is nice. 
so you can see here look, we've got a, a, a lot of polished area again underneath on, on the breakage on the fracture point um, that could well be rub marks where it's been jammed against another, another tooth somewhere or um, you know a lot of pressure applied and that might have been when it snapped the other tooth off what's this one like so yes again this one they've sustained uh, damage from after they've left because we know clearly that one of the teeth there was no rub marks at all along the fracture line here but both of these teeth have got rub marks on the fracture line so they've been squashed against stuff and we're going to be really careful inspecting the rest of the gearbox to see if that's not caused further damage to other gears um, you can see there look and it takes a, an amazing amount of pressure to do that kind of uh, damage and you can see here look on that tooth it's actually got a big flat in it across there it's been squashed I'd love to get the microscopic camera on this actually it would be pretty cool because it's really dug in so I think that's when when one tooth broke off this was probably the second tooth to fail I don't know let's see if it matches up with the fracture line one of them is Wow if you look at the fracture on that one it's got two planes to it it's not flat across the flat fracture it's got this ridge here and this it's got a peak running down here so whether it's been deformed or it's been crushed you can see on the end there look it has it's been crushed look at that how it's fractured open on there due to the pressure of another tooth digging in on this plane here pretty impressive stuff in all honesty and remember you know the, these components are telling us a story so I think this one it, despite the polishing marks they've happened post event I think this is the second tooth to fail I think that's that one let's have a look is that gonna fit in there it is that is almost a perfect fit look at that so that is definitely the tooth from there beyond any doubt whatsoever so that is tooth number two and I think that only broke because this one failed so this one came from here yes there look that one Wow why did it fail I don't know but I do know that that face on the tooth here has been crushed there's very clear evidence of massive pressure going on here now because of that there is a possibility and don't forget this bike has not been ridden since this failed there is a possibility of not only uh, there being damage to other gears uh, within the cluster there is a very small possibility that this shaft itself or the other shaft could have been bent so um, we're going to have to take the other shaft out and put it into some v-blocks and measure it with a dti with all the gears removed to make sure that the shafts aren't bent because there's clear evidence of massive pressure buildup on that tooth and that could have bent the uh, bent the shaft it's unlikely but it could have bent the shaft and we need to be sure god damn it i am gonna to have to strip the other side of the engine down alan's bikes honestly that's not really what i wanted to find to be honest um i was hoping that we could just make a list of parts order the parts uh, put the gearbox back together put the outer cover on put some oil in it do the other minor repairs, a couple of new tyres to go on the bike, and send it back to Alan, and he'd be happy and drink beer and be merry and so on. That's not going to be the case because of the evidence on this tooth, this one broken tooth, that, that crushing effect that we saw close up on the camera. Um, I believe that we need to check the two shafts, the main shaft and the lay shaft, for what we call run out to see if either of them or both are actually bent um, there is a possibility basically when a tooth you know goes into mesh on another gear say it's dropped in the valley 
it's going to force momentarily it's going to force those two shafts apart and that could cause them to bend gearboxes don't like that kind of stuff they really do not and neither do the casings as well so i'll have to give it a good clean out and get my torch in there and see if i can spot any kind of cracks in the casing as well um i can't rule anything out at this point in time okay crew that does bring us to the end of this video what will be in store on the third episode probably extracting the other shaft to be honest yeah i think so will it happen today don't know I need that puller. I need to get a puller to remove the clutch. So that's going to have to wait. I have to get that get that ordered uh, on Monday, and then when that arrives, we can progress. And that's the the nature of the beast. Unfortunately, you know, you you, you go step by step, and often you need to just stall out for a little bit to order more bits. Um, in this case, I've got to order a puller. It's going to slow us down a bit. But hey, two episodes in the can. It's pretty good for one day. Okay, crew, if you enjoyed the video, why not click on the subscribe button, ring the bell, and that way YouTube will send you a notification as and when I upload any new videos. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. However, you could also direct, uh, send me a direct email to andymechanic at live, L-I-V-E, dot co dot uk and a mechanic at live.co.uk it is me that answers the emails and i'll do my very best to respond back to you i can't guarantee an immediate response because i'm a pretty busy chap but i will do my very very best if you'd like to support the channel you can do that through patreon or paypal those that have in the past thank you very much it is much appreciated uh, those that are thinking about it i'm not going to hold you back send over the dough it always helps projects like this cost a lot of money to do and a lot of time to produce the videos and anything you send over is much appreciated okay crew well until next time cheers over and out and we get the up again oh. Thank <laughs> you.